Alrighty folks, I uh, forgot to show you how to make the little coach lamp that goes on the sides. You know, we're going to be making two of these. And this is what it, what it looks like. I put a candle in mine and didn't bother to put glass because it was just too much too much work to try and show you how to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And as you can see, it's, it's flat on one side. See how it's flat? and then it curves out on this side. This flat side is what goes up against the... Uh, it, they go on each side of the seat where the driver sits. But I'm going to show you how to make that real quick. You're going to need uh, a one and a quarter inch square punch or cut it out yourself. You'll need eleven of those. And you'll also need a three quarter inch square. You'll need three of those. And uh, I use for my candle inside. I, I this is what I had. So I and as you can see, they have some kind of swirly thing on them. I just took my little X-Acto knife and scraped that off till it looks smooth. And then just cut, cut it down short, of course. And then you're going to need some craft sticks which this is what I used on mine. There's the label. And uh, they're just little, they're square, not round like a toothpick. I guess some toothpicks are square like that. But anyway, uh, you'll need uh, four of those. And you could also use matches. As you can see, these are, these are square too, so you could use matches if you didn't have or you could even use toothpicks. It wouldn't matter just as long as you've got posts. This is these little posts on the side here. They could be round or square. I think square looks better, but it's up to you. Okay, and you'll also need your paper hinges. But this time we're using half inch strips folded in half. So they're a lot smaller. So you'll need some of those, and I just used regular copy paper on those, copy printer paper. And let's see, what else is there? Um, you'll need, we need to make two templates. Uh, one uh, would look like this. This is for, let's see if I can get this in the camera there. There. It's going to look like that, and this is to make the top of our lamp. And the way you get that pattern is you take your one and a quarter inch square and you measure up and mark, let's see, you mark it five eighths and seven eighths. That the five eighths is there, the seven eighths is there. And then you find your center on the seven eighths, put a mark, and uh, draw your lines up from the corner. And then that 5 eighths mark is where you mark off to chop off the, the top to take that point off. See how that one is. But I hope that hope that makes sense. But that's how you get your pattern for the top sides. And then you'll need another pattern, which I don't have. Uh, well, this is my template here. And uh, this is the back piece. It's this piece that goes on the back here. And the way you get that is, let me see, I want to measure to make sure I have them uh, correct. Let's see, that's one, okay, this side is one and one sixteenth. And this side is three quarters. And what you do is you make you a, a shape, let's see how far. All it is. It's one and one sixteenth tall. So make you a square, one and one sixteenth tall and wide. You know, it's a square. On the top side of your square, find the center, and then from the center, you're going to uh, go out. Let's see what's happened. One, two, three, four, five, four, five, six. So it's three eighths. Uh, you go from the center out three eighths on each side. You're you're going to end up with three quarters across there, and that's how you get it centered. Instead of you know you might if you start off one side, 
you're going to have it lopsided. So you need to go from the center out. So this side is 1 and 1 sixteenths. It's 1 and 1 sixteenths tall and it's 3 quarters this way. Okay, that's going to be our back. And uh, excuse my voice, I'm sick again. Uh, let's see, we want to start with putting our top together. And you cut out two pieces. I'm using my, I'm recycling my my uh, little Debbie boxes again, so that's what I'm using. And it's, you cut out eight of these um, shapes like this. I cut them out of the, the uh, one and a quarter inch squares. And you need eight of them, and you you put them in. Uh, you you glue them together in pairs. So there's two here, two here, two here, and two here. So there's our eight pieces, but it turns out to be four. Now we're going to put these together with our paper hinges to form the top. Up, sorry, up here. And uh, I don't know if I should. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that on camera. I'll bore you with that. And the way I do it is I just take a strip. I'm so sorry. And I put my glue on there. And it's always good to have a, a wet towel or a wet napkin or something close by. And you put your half on there. Half on here, I'm so sorry, I can't seem to stay on camera for some reason. And then I spread it open and put a little glue in between just to help it, you know, bond a little better. Probably not necessary because this isn't going to take a lot of weight. You know, it's not like it's going to have something bearing down on it, you know, or anything. And there's that one. And I'll cut it off better in a minute, but right now I'm just going to go to my next piece. shift my view or something of the camera that may be what my problem is I don't I'm so used to having things close to me because I can't see very well pieces together. such a headache today. I had one for a while, but it's been kind of dull. Today it's not so dull. Not horribly bad or anything, but just annoying. It sneezes my head off, too. That's always fun. So if I go into a sneezing fit during this video, sorry.
down on the table. And press it down real good. And we want the bigger hole in the top because that helps our bead. Oh, I forgot to tell you we need some beads. But that helps our bead to sit uh, well on the top. If you don't leave a big enough hole, then your bead will flop around, you know, won't stay in centered on the top. And now you just cut your little pieces off. Once you're done with this, get rid of little stragglers here, otherwise I'll be gluing myself to everything. Go get, get the glue off my finger real quick. Okay, next you take another of your um, You take a, one of your one and a quarter inch squares and you mark a line diagonally from each corner to find your center. And then I used a sixteenth of an inch punch to punch me a hole, but you could just use your paper piercer. And then this piece gets attached to the bottom of the piece you just made. And it goes like, like that. You just attach it on with the same, you know, the same method with the little draw the blank paper hinges. And I like to miter my corners on this one, and I just eyeball this one instead of folding back the corners like I showed you before. I just eyeball it. my hand if it wasn't attached. Yeah, that looks pretty good. See how it just, that's what your piece will look like, unfolded. And I'll need four of those. So I'm going to cut those real quick. I never know whether, you know, I, I don't want to bore anybody with my videos, and I know some people just go on and on and on. And, you know, their videos are like two hours long in, you know, 10 or 15 sections. And I try to make mine short because I know sometimes I get bored even watching. You know, I love, like there was this one tutorial I was watching and it ended up like nine parts. And they were just like two hours long each and it was kind of redundant really. They, they were showing the same thing basically. It was a pretty small project but they were just, I mean don't get me wrong, I love tutorials but you know if, if you just do something in slow motion for two hours you kind of lose interest, you know. You forget what they're making and so I try to make my videos you know, kind of quick, but I know that doesn't always occur. You know, you do want to show everything that you're making. You know, if you're going to go to the trouble of making a tutorial, you need to show what you're making and how to make it and, 
you know, to the best of your ability, but I don't know whether I'm doing too much or not enough sometimes. I don't ever want anybody to be bored. You know, but I do like to share. I know some people sell their tutorials and, you know, more power to them. I just don't feel right. You know, I don't feel like I'm good enough to sell mine. I just, you know, I enjoy sharing, so. You know, if I'm going to make it anyway, then it doesn't seem quite right to me to for me, that's that's my opinion. You know, that's for me, not for everybody. I know people have to make a living, and I think that's great. You know, I don't need the money. Well, I mean, everybody needs money, but I mean, I don't need the money. So I'm just babbling. I just like to, I like to share, and I like to, you know, help others as much as I can. And I appreciate so much all those that do, you know, do their tutorials out there. And uh, have them for free and have them for sale. I, you know, I buy one every now and then myself. Because there's one out there that I just can't live without. I'm, um, I'm not telling you much, am I here? Except for my babbling. I'm just putting on the side pieces, you know, to attach the bottom to this. Sorry for my ramblings. I don't make sense to myself half the time. But I really do appreciate all those people that share out there, you know, their tutorials and share their project. You know, even if they don't do a tutorial, you know, the people that share their projects, you can always get great, you know, your own ideas and, you know, do your own thing on them. And I'm very appreciative all of everybody that shares. But I often wonder, though, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you ask if, if somebody wants a tutorial, you know, see what you can do to about making one. And everybody always pipes up, oh, yeah, 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 I want a tutorial. But you never see anybody making this stuff, you know. They always ask for tutorials, but I don't ever, be, I don't ever see anybody making them, you know. So I always wonder about that. Anyway, there's our, our top part right there. And then... Uh, we need to put together our little, you cut your little sticks at one inch. And what I do is I take one of my one and a quarter inch squares and I put a little glue on the end of my sticks and we're going to put them in, in the corners, sort of, not directly in the corner, but away from the corner. I'll show you. So I get them in, hopefully. Stop falling down like that. Where do you think you're going? Excuse me a minute. Will I get it closer to me here? Okay. Hopefully you can see that. I don't want to pick it up because it might fall apart again. And then we take, um, 
Where did all my pieces go? Everything disappeared on me when I wasn't looking. Hmm. Guess somebody must have ate it. Well. Hmm. Grab another scrap. I don't know what happened to that one. in two pieces. Oh, it was my pieces that were... There they are. Never mind. Duh. Here they are. I still have them clamped together. You... The two... I'm sorry, people. Two of the three-quarter inch squares, you glue them together. And this is what... Oh, my little stick fell down. When I went looking. And we're going to glue this... to the top of these sticks. Come on. Okay. And now we're going to put glue on the top of these little sticks. I hope they don't fall on us. And then we're going to put sticks on each corner of this little piece here. It's hard to, it's hard for me to do this far away from me. Get it close to me for a minute so I can see. Sorry. That's one thing about working with miniatures. It's kind of hard sometimes, you know, because your pieces are so small. Okay, now we've got our piece together, and you want to bend it to where you one side. See, it could normally sit like that, but you want it to bend. You want one side straight and one side. You want your back side straight. So you want it to dry like that. And that one shifted on me there. So anyway, we're going to let this dry. We're going to let this dry a little bit. And then what you're going to do, what I had to do is since I didn't have the proper gold paint, I had to use black. I first painted them black and then I went in with my, because I didn't want a real glittery gold. So I went in with my smooch. This is gold lame. And I just, after I painted it black, I went in with this gold, gold uh, lame and went over it. So we're going to do that. We paint all these pieces here. Let's see. I'm trying to think. You need to paint. You need to paint at least the top part and this part where the beads are going to go because once you put the beads in, it, you don't want paint getting all over your beads. So you need to paint at least the bottom and the top before we assemble it. So let this dry. Paint these two pieces, and you don't have to paint the bottom that's going to be covered. So, I know this is kind of confusing right now. And also, I, I wanted to tell you the beads. You need, I used a tassel from Tim Holtz on the end of mine. Plus, the, here's the beads I used. I used an eye pin. And then just... Let's see. Is that helping? Probably not. We're getting a shadow. That's the beads for the bottom. And then this is the beads for the top. 
so that's what I use for the top and just string them on an eye pin and then the tassel will go on the bottom of the of this string here tassel goes on that but we'll let this dry we'll paint these and then I'll be back okay I got my top painted I didn't bother painting the bottom because it's going to be attached to something else. Uh, this was consisted of four pieces that we put together that were double thicknesses. And this is one thickness here with the hole in the center. And what we do with this piece is we take our, our little beads that we strung up here. And you're going to put it through the hole. Just like that. And then you're going to bend over your wire onto the bottom and uh, I won't bore you with doing that because I have to have it close up to me to do it but then once you get that done you've got the bottom piece here which is a single layer with the hole in the center this is the three quarter inch square you're going to put your other piece your other set through that has the I put the tassel on the end while I was off camera. And we're going to string this through this piece and bend our wire over and kind of curl it around so it doesn't stick out. But there's that piece. And once those two pieces are done, then all you have to do is glue them to this piece, which I went ahead and, and painted. It consists of two I don't think I showed this before, but this the top is two one and a quarter inch squares and the bottom is two three quarter inch squares and then I put the back on and then once it was dry I painted it. So there's that piece and all, I, all that's left to do is just glue the top onto here and glue the bottom onto there and then add your little candle in like that. You just glue your candle in and you're done. That was simple, and you come up with this. This is what it looks like when done. And these will attach to the side of your seat, and you'll get to see them done and, and all attached in the final uh, video where I show you know it completely done. But that's it for now. Thanks for stopping by, sticking with me.